Hey everyone, and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Quick disclaimer before we move on, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read the disclaimer in its entirety before moving on. Channel plug, here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to bring you interesting, relevant, and understandable medical education for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. If you want to follow along, we do have a lovely subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of all the videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And lastly, if you'd like to support us outside of viewing our videos, we have several ways in which you can do that linked in the video description and pinned comment. Stay well, keep learning, and back to the video. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the approach to hypoxemia um, using the AA gradient in a chest x-ray. So this is going to be another video that is targeting more of those in, you know, medicine or medical education or healthcare. But again, as always, we welcome everyone who's interested to check it out. Um, but this is going to be one way you can approach the patient with hypoxemia or low blood oxygen levels. And this approach is going to simply use the AA gradient, which we talked about in a previous video, uh, we will link that in this video's description. So we're not going to go into what the AA gradient is. Um, so check out that other video if you're interested in that. We do a lot of good uh, good discussion. Um, but for the AA gradient, all you need is an arterial blood gas, an ABG, and then you need to know how much supplemental oxygen they're on, and then a chest X-ray. So approach to hypoxemia using an AB ABG, the amount of oxygen they're on, and a chest X-ray. So to start, you'd calculate their AA gradient, all right? And we went over the equation for this in the other video. Partial pressure of alveolar oxygen minus the partial pressure of arterial oxygen, which is a calculation that is easy to do just using these two variables. That's all you need to do it. And then you get either a normal or low AA gradient or a high AA gradient. Starting with the normal or low AA gradient side, because um, that side's more straightforward, and Having a normal AA gradient means that the amount of oxygen you're breathing into your lungs is diffusing across the alveoli into the arteries without a problem. The problem is that you're not getting enough oxygen into your lungs. Once it's in the alveoli, it diffuses into the artery without an issue, but you're not getting enough of that oxygen in. So then after you have a normal or low AA gradient, you look at the carbon dioxide. If the carbon dioxide level is high, it means the patient is hypoventilating, aka they're not breathing deeply enough and not getting enough oxygen into the lung or enough carbon dioxide out of the lung. So normal or low AA gradient and high carbon dioxide is going to give you things like COPD, which is emphysema, OHS, uh, uh, obesity, hypoventilation syndrome, uh, taking too many opiates can cause us to be hypoventilatory, um, and things of that nature, things that are going to, such as neuromuscular diseases too, if your diaphragm isn't working. So the other thing that can cause a normal or low AA gradient, if their CO2 is normal, would actually just be that they have a low amount of oxygen they're breathing in. Um, and this would be like someone who's at high altitude. Their uh, pressure of inspired oxygen is too low. Um, this one's more rare, especially for those of us that uh, hang out at sea level and not up on mountains. So normal low AA gradient is primarily going to be a hypoventilation syndrome, so in which case you'll also see the CO2 high. And that kind of gives you your differential diagnoses for that amount, um, that side of hypoxemia. So those who are hypoxic, have a normal NL normal AA gradient and then a high CO2. Um, that's kind of a trifecta that would support hypoventilation syndromes. The other side is much more complex. So this is a patient who's hypoxic who has a high or abnormal AA gradient. And this is where the chest x-ray comes in. So remember, this was approached to hypoxemia using the AA gradient and chest x-ray. So then you get a chest x-ray. And the chest x-ray is either normal or negative, or it's abnormal or positive. So those who are hypoxic, who have a high AA gradient and a negative chest x-ray, you're thinking vascular causes, right? And those vascular causes can be broken down into causes that are responsive to supplemental oxygen, O2 responsive, versus not very responsive to supplemental oxygen, all right? So patients hypoxic, do your AA gradient, if it's high, get a chest x-ray. If that chest x-ray is negative, think vascular causes. And then 
tease out whether their oxygen improves with supplemental oxygen or if it doesn't really improve. If it does improve, you're thinking things like pulmonary embolism, all right? And this is because, you know, a VQ mismatch, right? So here's your alveoli, that air sac, oxygen is coming in, and that oxygen is trying to diffuse into the artery that surrounds the alveoli. But because you have a big blood clot in the artery, you're not getting any blood flow around that alveoli, and thus that oxygen is unable to diffuse in. So you're going to be breathing in enough oxygen into the alveoli, but you're not going to have enough oxygen in the artery, so you'll have a high AA gradient. But your chest x-ray is negative because the alveoli themselves are okay, and your O2 responsive, meaning when you give more and more oxygen, the oxygen, well, it is kind of partial, technically a partial O2 responsive state, um, the oxygen levels will come up. If you have a high AA gradient, a normal chest x-ray, and you give the patient supplemental oxygen, and their oxygen really is not improving that much, you have to worry about a shunt, right? And this could be a cardiac or pulmonary shunt. So what this means is, again, we'll draw a little heart here. Um, this is a heart. You have two sides of the heart, right? The right atrium and right ventricle. And that right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs. So the deoxygenated blood goes to the lungs. And then that pumps blood to the left side of the heart, left atrium, left ventricle. And the left side of the heart pumps blood to the body, oxygenated blood. So the right side has blue deoxygenated blood. It goes to the lungs, gets oxygenated. So the left side has oxygenated blood or red, and that goes out to the body. Right, so blue goes to the lungs, the red comes back from the lungs. So what happens with a shunt is you bypass the lungs, right? You shunt right to left. So if you bypass the lungs and you're shunting deoxygenated blood to the left side of the heart, that is going to cause hypoxemia because you're not getting any oxygen into that blood from the lungs, you're just getting that deoxygen blood from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart. It can also happen in the lungs. You can have a pulmonary shunt where that vein touches that artery and it bypasses most of the lungs. This will not improve much if you give oxygen, right? Because you can pump oxygen into the lung all you want, but if you're not having any of that blood go to the lung, it doesn't matter how much oxygen you give the lungs because you're still going to shunt past it, all right? So that's kind of a hypoxemic patient who has a high AA gradient and a normal chest x-ray who does not respond much to oxygen. In this case, you'd want to get an echocardiogram, a transthoracic echocardiogram with a bubble study. And what that means is that you put a little bubble on the right side of the heart and see if that bubble pops out to the left side of the heart, aka has a right to left shunt. So what if you have a high AA gradient, you get that chest x-ray, and the chest x-ray is positive, it's abnormal. Then you have an alveolar cause of your hypoxemia, meaning if we look in this, you know, if we draw another alveoli, here's an air sac, you're getting oxygen in, right? But what you're not able to do, here's an artery around the alveoli, and that's supposed to be oxygen, what you're not able to do is diffuse that oxygen into the artery for, you know, some kind of reason. You're having trouble getting that oxygen from the alveoli into the artery itself. That can be from a handful of different things. So if that chest x-ray shows, you know, what looks like fluid on the lung or filled alveoli, right, you have the alveoli filled with fluid, that can be things like pulmonary edema or fluid in the lung, pneumonia, which would be, you know, pus, in the alveoli, causing that oxygen not to be able to diffuse in the arteries. Um, ARDS, or acute respiratory distress syndrome, DAH, diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, right? So these are alveoli are full of blood, something that is not going to allow this oxygen to get from the alveoli into the bloodstream. And that would show kind of fluid-filled alveoli or, you know, edema um, on chest x-ray. You can also have loss of alveoli, right? With COPD, um, essentially you get obstruction of the alveoli. So these alve alveoli can't really exchange gas well. Um, but we're going to, you know, not spend too much time focusing on that because that kind of explains itself. The third thing is if you have collapsed alveoli. So if that chest x-ray shows you a bunch of alveoli that, you know, are just totally collapsed and not exchanging air anymore. And that can be from four different reasons. One could be the airway if there's mucus plugging, right? So if you have bronchi branching into a, a bunch of alveoli and this bronchi gets plugged with a big Goomba mucus, 
then there's not going to be any air going in or out, and all these alveo alveoli will collapse, so a mucus plug. Or it could be pleural, right? So the lung itself has two pleura, a visceral pleura, which attaches to the actual lung tissue, and a parietal pleura, which is more on the um, wall. And if these pleura separate, such as, you know, a pleural effusion, right, you get a bunch of fluid between the pleura, then you'll have collapse of the um, alve alveoli because that effusion is pushing up on the lung tissue. Same with PTX, which is pneumothorax. Instead of fluid, that'd be air. You also could have collapse from diaphragmatic weakness, but remember, this could be a normal AA gradient as well, right, because it could cause hypoventilation, which we talked about over here. And then the fourth possible thing is, you know, chest wall causing collapse, which is pain, which again could be normal from hypoventilation. Uh, so these are kind of your two big ones when you're thinking about collapsed alveoli. All right, so that is the, we're actually going to zoom out, see if we can get you to see all of it here. That is the approach to hypoxemia using the AA gradient and chest x-ray. And for the AA gradient, remember all you need is that ABG and FiO2. So this technique just needs an arterial blood gas. They need to know how much oxygen the patient is on, and then you need a chest x-ray. All right. Hope that was helpful. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Let us know what other topics you'd like us to cover. Definitely check out our uh, Understanding the AA Gradient video as well. Um, and we will see you all next time.